What's up, everybody? This is Frank from Avery, and you're watching Eric live on the air. For the words we prevail, so our voices will be heard. For the words we prevail, so our voices will be Hey, so I am sitting here with... Frank from Avery. Uh, now we're here at the Mayhem Festival. What's yep. coming up next for you guys? Um, we get a little break, and by a little break, I mean less than a week off, and then we go to the UK and we do the Reading and Leeds festivals, which are two big festivals over there. Uh, five or six shows in Europe built around that, and then I believe after that we have a Canadian tour, which runs right from that into that. Uh, and then I believe in uh, October we're supposed to go to uh, the South Pacific, Indonesia, Thailand, China, Malaysia, and all those places. So. We're busy for the rest of the year. I'm sure Stillborn Fest is going to be coming up again in the northeastern uh, part of the U.S., which we do every year in between Christmas and New Year's. Um, and then uh, talks about going to Australia in uh, in January, and probably get in the studio at the beginning of next year to have another record out by summer next year. So there you go. That's the next year. My first band that I was in Integrity, we played the Warp Tour when I rolled from Cleveland, which is where I'm from originally. And, uh, Played the very first one. I think we played after like Quicksand and L7. When you hear bands warp tour, what are the first words that come to your mind? A lot of bands, just a lot of bands and a lot of stages and like a chaos, really. Because it's for me to pinpoint the music that goes on to it's it's, it's unlike Ozfest and something like this. The music with the warp tour, the the things that the kid, those kids are into changes over the years. You know, when it first came out, it was the more alternative and the fat records and the epitaph stuff and then it went to the streamo the whole scene and now you have like you know more you see more metalcore bands and stuff on it the thing about warp tour compared to a tour like this is warp tour is very very young which is cool you know we we want to continue to be successful band and reach out to the younger audiences we're, we're always trying to do that so yeah that's another reason i love to be on board with you so plus uh John Reese, who runs this, I know he has his hands on the Warped Tour and Kevin Lyman and everything, and they've always been great to us, so, you know, we'd love to do it, guys, so if you're watching, better have a... For all the kids who haven't seen the video, and a lot of you, I think, is from OzFest, the video that we have for Before Dishonor, uh, you can look it up on YouTube, that was actually filmed at the Warped Tour, so I know a lot of people out there think that that was from an OzFest, but it wasn't, it was from when Avery was on the Warped Tour back in the day. So it's a pretty cool video. Check it out. Hey, great before the song. When you were growing up, is this what you envisioned being a rock star would be like? It's what I wanted to do. You know, when I was a young kid and I had Kiss records and I was putting on concerts for my family in the living room when I had with a tennis racket guitar and I was six years old or whatever. When I saw Kiss, that changed my life. That was what I wanted to be when I was a kid, you know, like that. So, because of being introduced to music at such an early age, I found the underground scene at an early age. You know, by the time I was 14, you know, I was going to see shows in club where there was slam dancing and it was exploited and bands like Death and the whole thrash metal scene and crossover scene, VRIs or Hoosiers and stuff. So, I think that that enabled me to network and meet people and start my own bands and be involved in it and uh it's, it's just i think about how long ago that was you're talking to, you know over 20 years ago for me so to be a part of it still and you know even this at my this late in my uh career and uh at my age i'm just happy to be doing it even though you know i'm, I'm getting up there i'm the oldest guy in the band so i'll be 30, 39 this year but uh it's all good we uh I wouldn't have it any other way, you know, it took me a while to get to where I wanted to be, but uh, how many people can get, get up every day and say, you know, I love what I do, you know, there's not a lot of people out there that love their jobs, so, or I guess even have jobs at this point right now in the States, so the way that things are in the States is, I mean, we have our fans here, here obviously, that are, we're their favorite band, you know, they have, there's thousands of people out there with Avery tattoos, and, you know, our fans are diehards, and, you know, they're, they get it, you know, but at the same time, you have trends in America <clears throat> with stuff that's popular and comes and goes, and people come and go out of the music scene. People listen to this stuff for a few years, and then they're off to college, and they're married, and they're forgotten. Oh, I used to listen to this crazy music when I was younger. It just seems in Europe that they're, like, in it for life, and they don't care about what your merch looks like or what the latest fashion in the scene is or something like that. You know, they're, they're more about the music more than anything. 
not to diss the U.S., but that's just how it is over there. And, and in Europe especially, you know, I can't, I can't just say over there when I'm talking about the rest of the world, but in Europe for sure. Unfortunately for a band like us, we're able to go places that a lot of, even bands on the main stage haven't been. You know, we played Israel, we played Greece, we played Turkey, we played Russia, we go, we go everywhere we can possibly go. And it literally makes it impossible for us to put a record out every year too, because the, the, the album cycle has to be like, the touring cycle is two years for us to play everywhere we need to play. Yeah. So that's why you don't get an album out from us every year. But, uh, you know, it's, they're definitely, the, the audiences overseas, they, you know, they, they don't, like you said, they don't get as much as, as, uh, as we do over here. You can go to a show in any major city probably three or four days a week. And, you know, they just appreciate it. And, uh, it's their, it's their chance to see you. And it's been two years since they saw you last. Because we're in the States, it might be six months since they saw us last, you know? Yeah. So, it's their big night. But at the same time, like without here, it's everybody's big day. You go out there and you give 100%. This is their day they've been waiting months for. They've taken off work, they've taken off school, and they're here to see you, so. But, uh, you know, people here are a little bit spoiled. Like, well, I love to go to Australia. I think it's great there. And especially when it's really, the weather's really crummy here in the U.S., you can go to Australia. And, um, <coughs> you know, you, you have nice weather out there. You have beautiful beaches, you have uh, very polite people, the food's good, you know, everybody speaks the language and stuff, so that's one of my favorite places to go and tour, but like for crowds wise, you know, in the States, it's Detroit, California, we have obviously Connecticut, the fans' hometown is good, um, Germany's great to us, really great, Europe, <coughs> excuse me, um, we headlined with Full Force last year. Uh, that's a huge festival in Europe, about 30,000 people. So that just goes to show you. And then we just did Belgium before this. We were direct support for Kiss at Grass Pop Festival. We probably played in front of 50, 60,000 people. And we played right before they played above Kill Switch and Gaze and everything. So, you know, we're, that's just goes to show uh, our popularity overseas. But um, the crowds over there are great. But uh, the crowds are good everywhere. If they're not, we just, Jamie says and does the right things to get them going anyway. So yeah. we can turn a, a lame crowd into a, a full blown rager. So when you say weird, sometimes that translates into bad. And, you know, weird it can be freak things. Like yesterday, I was walking through the crowd yesterday at yesterday's show in Massachusetts. And one of our fans there, he came up to me, he's like, Frank, how are you doing? I'm like, hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Or whatever. And he's like, not so good. I have cancer, you know, and just. And he showed me where he was having his uh, operations done, like in here and stuff. Man, it's chemo and stuff, which just really hit me hard to, uh, you know, even sometimes you can, we get letters and stuff like that, or people write us messages on the Facebook and MySpace. But to have somebody come up to me right down in there and, and have to, you know, tell me about that, and just things like that, or they take you by surprise, you know, that's where I'm from, you know, for lack of a better term, for being weird. but. Uh, Something like stuff like that, and you just never know what you're gonna run into out there. And uh, I was very unfortunate to uh, to, uh, to 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 see you run into him yesterday. But I guess everything's gonna be all right with him. And uh, certainly glad we were able to play for him and have him. You know, I sent him over the merch booth or whatever he wanted. I told him to take care of him over there all day. But uh, stuff like that. Um, I don't know. Signing people's arms all the time. Then the next time you see them, it's tattooed on them. My autograph. Stuff like that. I mean, there is some weird stuff that goes on. I mean, I just can't, off the top of my head, think of anything. There's such when you when you're dealing with thousands and thousands of people all the time, you know, something crazy is going to happen sooner or later. So. Yeah. If you weren't in a breed or you weren't in a band, what would you be doing right now? Uh, man, that's a good question. I'd probably be working on cars, which is what I was doing before before I started touring. But um, what I would like to do is I like to cook a lot. I'm a big fan of cooking. I'm always cooking at home and baking and cooking on the grill. And I'm always watching the Food Network and stuff like that. So. Thank you very much for your time.